Well, hello, YouTube. This is Dog Shoes Garage. And I'm showing you right now a brake fluid reservoir. And if you don't know what this is, we're going to help you find out. When you back out of the car, you look, it is usually on the driver's side up against the firewall. So today we're going to go in, we're going to talk about why this matters, all things you want to know about brake fluid. So stay tuned. Well, now that we're back in the garage where it's actually warmer, we're going to go into, I've shown you the reservoir. That's where you would uncap the cap and put some brake fluid in. But the question is that everybody likes to say all these theories about fluids and really, first let's talk about really quickly what brake fluid is. So brake fluid is hydraulic fluid, okay? It comes usually in a container like this. And I apologize because everything is always reverse <laughs> when you do a camera backwards. But this is DOT3 brake fluid. You can get Super Tech brand. There's all these other brands as well. There's also DOT4. There's also a 5 and a 5.1. So what it is, brake fluid is basically a hydraulic fluid that has a very high boiling point. And as you compress this fluid, it's trying to push and transfer the energy to your brake calipers, which just simply pinch. So while this matters is because when you have old brake fluid, you can have um, water can contaminate the system if you get water in and so what happens if you live in a human environment the system is not completely water i mean it should be like a completely isolated uh, gap free environment but that's not necessarily the case nothing is ever perfect whenever you open up this cap or whenever you open up your like brake fluid reservoir that brings air into it there is moisture in the air and moisture is the enemy of the brake system so few things that I found what you know there's different intervals that people talk about bleeding your brakes well a lot of the systems now ABS okay that's auto, that's like an analog brake system right and so that has another trick to bleeding it and the problem is is not everybody has the tools or has the ability to do that and plus bleeding brakes usually is kind of a two-person job anyway so I have a kind of a little small it's not perfect but it's a pretty good ghetto fix for doing this by yourself so What's the difference between 3, 4, 5, and 5.1? Well, between these two, this one just simply has a higher boiling point. This one actually completely can replace dot 3, but you can't go 3 into 4, if that makes sense. So 4 can go into 3, because this should raise the boiling point some. If you have a 3 system and you keep pouring 4 in there and you remove some 3 or mix of the two, these can mix. You don't want to put 3 into 4 that will lower your boiling point and the system's actually designed to have a specific boiling temperature because of that pressure. And like we said, when you when you increase pressure, temperatures rise. That said, I don't have any DOT5 because DOT5 is actually silicone based and it is not, absolutely not, something you could just pour into either of these two systems, okay? It will cause problems. And so 5.1 is kind of a different change, but again, most of these cars don't use those. So from the, especially the older stuff that I work on, almost everything is three. But I went ahead and bought four because my pilot needs four. So now when this one three runs out, I'll just continue to use four from then on. There's no reason not to. This one's a little bit more expensive than this, but it's brake fluid, okay? Now, speaking of brake fluid, one thing you've got to know is brake fluid is really, really bad on paint. And I mean bad. You leave this all over the hood of your car, come back in the morning, you can almost wipe your paint off. Very bad for paint. So I actually used this because I bought a motorcycle and I poured some brake fluid on the gas tank because I was going to repaint it and I want to remove the old brake or the old uh, paint from like the 70s. And so I wiped it on there and then it kind of let it sit there for a while and I rubbed it. And after like a couple hours of being on there, I was able to rub the paint, still old paint, right off. So brake fluid is nasty. If you spill this on any paint, please wipe it up quickly. Just get some Dawn dish soap and a little bit of water, wipe it up, double check with a little more wet rags and some water, follow it up and you should be fine. Okay, so that said, We've talked about brake fluid, what's the difference between one or the other and all that. We've covered those things and how it is with paint. The last thing I want to cover is how do you then get this out of the system if you're by yourself? So what I like to do, first, there's this thing called a turkey baster. Now, <laughs> if you have a wife, which is probably why you have one of these in the first place, because most guys just don't have a turkey baster laying around. This one, as you can imagine, was once my wife's turkey baster and then I... Uh, took it to the garage and uh, let's just say after a discussion, I was buying her a new turkey baster. 
obviously this is a one-way trip. So there's a few things in the garage that I've been like, hey, I need that, so buy another one. Um, I would suggest just go and uh, say, hey, honey, I bought this one on Amazon, and uh, do you want the new one or do you want the old one? Because some people get weird and attached to a turkey baster, because, yeah, who knows? But all you do with this is you can squeeze it and then put it in your reservoir and then slurp it out and then spit this into a... And I have, like, a... I just keep an extra window or washer fluid of, like, the junk. Like, this is all crap brake fluid from that Corolla that I bought because the brake fluid just hadn't been changed. So there is a lot of fluid in the system, but just like any other fluid, it mixes together. And so if I put, if I suck out like, like whatever's in the reservoir, that's okay because I'm gonna pour it right back in. What you don't ever wanna do is drain stuff out of the reservoir and then forget to fill it and push on your brakes because then that'll introduce air into the lines and then you have to bleed the system. So I feel like I'm like conducting music here. Don't I? So this is a very useful tool to just siphon all the crap that you have out of the reservoir, spit it into a container, take it to where you need to dispose it properly, and then fill it back up with brake fluid, the new stuff. Then after maybe like a month or when you do your next oil change, do it again, then do it again, and then eventually you'll be coming clean and it'll look good. And that's already one, one change on mine started to look better, better. The other thing is I bought this from Amazon. This is kind of a, uh, it's like a really strong, suction cup which gets stuck and so you can it's like a, almost like a giant syringe but same thing you just dip this in there pull this back out and just fill this cylinder with all the brake fluid that you don't need squirt it into the bottle rinse wash repeat do that again so another option i think this was a 10 or 12 bucks this is uh just a generic one somebody mentioned online you can actually still see there's a little bit of brake fluid in there just floating around from the last time i did this so all that to say Brake fluid is critical to your system. If you have old brake fluid, does it last forever? The answer is no. We've already covered this with other fluids. Brake fluid does not last forever. Nothing lasts forever. But especially something that is in an environment where it's humid. If it's dry, like in Colorado or New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and you park in the garage all the time, I've heard of people having brake fluid for five, eight years in the same car, put 100,000 miles on it, and never touch the brake fluid. So. If you're concerned about this, just drain it out from here, suction it out and pour some more in. And then check your manual, because maybe you have a special car. I don't have anything special, but maybe you do. So look up and see what kind of car do you have and what does it call for? And then the last thing, so we're talking about brake fluid. You might pop your reservoir of your brake fluid, it has a min and a max. One catch is if you do your own brakes, understand this. If, as your brake pads wear, they close this space in and that is filling on this back side with brake fluid. So it takes a little more brake fluid to get those pressure plates to push together. So when you take your brakes off and you squeeze the calipers and you push the piston back, what happens is that brake fluid comes pumps right back into the reservoir again. So that's where you wanna make sure you kinda of uncap your reservoir and you may wanna siphon some out as you're squeezing those calipers because if your brakes are super you know, if it's totally full and then you start squeezing those, then you're gonna get brake fluid everywhere. So if you happen to find that yours is low, don't panic because maybe your brakes are low. You should have them checked or again, check them, check them yourself. I always just like to do brakes because they're really easy on Toyotas and Hondas. It's a couple bolts and you're done. And so I always do them myself. I'll do them usually every like couple years, maybe 30,000 miles. Sometimes if it's just, I'm like, ah, oh, you know what, I haven't changed those brakes in a while, or I drove the truck a bunch with a trailer on, and I was like, you know, I just wanna get some new brake pads. They're like 50 bucks. Uh, braking is critical to living. So to me, it's, it's not that, like that expensive to where I'm worried about it. But again, if you have this, it should be fine. But if you leave this cap off, then you need to dispose of it because water, again, goes into this, and we've already talked about that. Definitely bad for this. So. If you have this, they say this because I have opened this before, this bottle can now be contaminated. I've also never had that happen. I've never had my brakes fail. The corrosion that can happen on the inside of the brake system because there's water that's introduced to it, that is real. But again, I've never had that happen, but I also live in a dry climate. So just do yourself a favor, drain it out, put some dot four in here, and then continue and continue and continue. And if you have another trick or a technique, please let me know. Again, I appreciate everybody subscribing and liking this channel. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm going to keep doing this as long as we have time to be able to do this. So please like and subscribe so we can keep this going. And again, thank you for your time, and have a nice day.